Alright, this is Saku Aku Transmissions, episode number three. I'm here with uh, the great linguist of the island, the only one, Esteban Manureva, uh, Fuente Salida Rapu. Well, hey there. Mm -hmm. How are you, Steve? I'm doing well, having a glass of wine, looking at this freaking sunset. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. In the heights of Pukurangyuka. One of the coolest spots on Rapa Nui, the heights of Pukurangyuka. So we were talking a little bit about um, um, science, about archaeology. We were talking a little bit about preservation, conservation of archaeological features. And the idea is to, well, give you some insight about um, all of this, about um, how the statues of the island, what's the state, what's the current state of the archaeological features of the island? And maybe um, bring some insight from, from outside, right, how they treat uh, archaeological heritage elsewhere in other parts of the world so I don't know what, what, how can we summarize what's the current state of the archaeological heritage of this island huh? well I'll say in a way it's somewhat precarious it's been I think in the stasis way for about 20 years with minor changes here and there probably the biggest changes were the uh, the conservation processes done in 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 Ajutong Ariki and in uh, Huria Orenga, probably in the yeah. last past two or three years. But other than other than that, it's been in a stasis way. I, I'd say I wouldn't say it's been left over because still there's well more and more the National Park candidates been taking care of the at least the main spots the traffic areas of the island but then we still have a lot to do we still have a lot of challenges to do so when it goes about the um, uh, history of the archaeological features of the island they, they were not left in a very good state like uh, um, we had our issues with our uh, monuments right yeah to, um, our monuments date like for for the people that are new to East right to Rapa Nui history our monuments are not so old, right? They're made of stone, um, and stone is one of those things that last. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and the, they date, well, the ones that were, are currently visible on the surface, they date from the, I don't know, late 1300s onwards, yeah. 1300s, 1400s, 1500s, 1600s, and um, they were mostly destroyed or changed, modified. I don't know. I know that there's this euphemism. Like if most of the I mean, archaeologists they... are afraid of, of saying that the monuments were destroyed, right? Well, I wouldn't say destroyed because we still have a lot of it. But I guess a lot of it was lost in time, and a lot of it has been changed throughout many historical processes. I, I guess in the last hundred years. Because if you take a look, like the last fifty years, for example been great for archaeology for archaeological sense for um, restoration I mean if you compare it to the last like the 19th century you compare it to what happened there I think of the last 50 years only the first 20 were really good we're for really good yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, will, I, will, I, will, the I will grant you that yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> but still like now we do have for example now 20 years ago let's say go to the National Park what would you able to do? Anything. Yeah. You were able to do anything. Go now today. 2018. Mm -hmm. It's very restricted for, for people. Now, we also have a lot of affluence of people. We have a lot of, of, of human humans coming by and just but mangling it, their work. But it's restricted only in the so-called official sites. Right? There are still oh, yeah, lots definitely. of... Lots of places that have no presence of any park rangers, no presence of, of anybody. Um, and in those places, like, people still do whatever. There was this uh, girl that did that stupid thing of climbing a statue in Ahuone Makihi because it's a place that's not guarded. It's a place well, that's not... Uh, I will... I will you know, that was, like, a month ago. My thoughts on that are that she probably didn't go there by herself. I really doubt that she was... Well, like, some, oh, someone took the picture. Someone, someone took, took the, picture. the picture and someone was there with her. Yeah. Somebody stopped to, 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 to 
show her that somehow. So there's still no, I, but only Maki is visible from the road. I mean, still I know, but 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 just to stop there precisely to do that thing right there. You'd be I surprised to see how many times I've dro uh, driven past Onemakihi and I've seen well, people yeah, standing on the Ahu. Well, I, not only that, but like, like Onemakihi is this uh, really nearby archaeological site next to the road, next to the main road that crosses yeah. the coast side South of Israel. Coast, South, South Coast Road. Road. Yeah, so, um, um, so yeah, it's pretty easy to get there, it's pretty easy to go down, it's pretty easy to do whatever. Now, there's a lot of signs there, right? The fact that there's no par National Park Rangers doesn't mean that there's nothing there, right? They still have a couple of signs that say, hey, do not get... Like, universal signs, like stop signs, for example, that say, hey, don't get on top of the Ahu, don't get on top of the Moai. Now, I have somewhat, for example, if you go to Ahu Tepeo, for example. Yeah. And, you know, it's a, it's a hike. That's a hike. Regardless of where you're going from, you're, sure. you're going from it to hike, you know. Oh, the bay on the west coast on top of a cliff. Yeah, uh, so so I've been there many times, and most of the times I have to tell one or two people at least, dude, get off get off the, the piece of rock there, you know, because it's archaeology. Get off the, 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 the building block. Get off the Get off, get the off fence. my damn heritage. <laughs> so, and, and I guess it's because somewhat places like that are... are are left alone, or for somewhat forgotten by. I don't. I don't like to say National Park Kennedy, but for public view, like general public view. So, in that sense, I'll say there's a lot of places, there's a lot of things that we still have to 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 deal with. But on one hand, do we really want to put like super restrictive things in order for people not to do stupid stuff? Yeah. Or, Definitely. Or do we want to fill the, the, the atmosphere with with signs everywhere, with lines everywhere, with, a, with there, paths there everywhere? Should, there should be definitely no signs at all. Uh, well, this is how I see it. And then you can share how you see it, how, how it should work. Mm -hmm. right? Back in the day, when, as, as you said, back in the day there, was, there were no restrictions. You could do, as a Rapanu, you could do anything you wanted. You could go climb the statues, hug them, take, well, whatever, right? Do whatever you wanted. Yeah. And there was no one there to tell you otherwise. Like, most of us, most Rapanui, were still conscious. We, we wouldn't make a graffiti on the statues. That, that's a Western thing. Oh, yeah, us us Rapanui people never did e ever a graffiti on, on any archaeological site at all. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, in the 1960s, like, the, there was this um, stupid person that did a graffiti in the stone Haukoka yeah. at the uh, Ranokau uh, freshwater lake by the, the edge of the lake, like yeah. that, going down to the lake, and wrote his uh, last name as some sort of a trophy, right? Well, that was inc incredibly stupid, but um, it's good that he wrote his name. Because now we know the name of the the prick who who did that, right? Yeah. And he can be in the hall of shame of the island. Now, after that, there's a few other graffiti. There's one in the shoulder of uh, Moai Tuturi, also done yeah. by a Westerner. There's one graffiti in uh, the a few graffiti in the Punapau Pukao, right? right yeah. um, Oike also in nearby. Vallajeva at the very bottom of the... Yes, there's yeah, a graffiti there's a, in Vallajeva. plenty in, of them. Right? Yeah, in Maunga, Vallajeva, there's, there are some graffiti also done by Westerners. Yeah. And so, on. so, this is the, 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 the bad custom, right, and that has reached the island. And uh, obviously now we have a problem because um, young and foolish and reckless people, not so young anymore, uh, but people that, well, just learn this idiotic behavior are now doing, maybe not graffiti on the petroglyphs, but some people are doing, like, re-marking re them. Like, yeah. like, like, like yeah, ah, this petroglyph is a little bit eroded, let's let's kind of make it more visible. Yeah. But they are just scratching the, the outline of the petroglyph. And that causes, like, the biggest harm to the petroglyph that you can yeah. imagine. Right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's probably the explain there. You know, like, I, maybe I was just, we were just talking about it a little bit before... Probably, I, the way I see that is that probably it's just trying to make something good out of ignorance. Yeah. So, 
you know, the intentions are not always the best. And, well, it might be good intentions, but the outcome is not always the best one, right? Yeah. But, well, basically, that's that's the how things have changed in, yeah. to a certain extent. The Rapa Nui people never did that, and then, well, foreigners brought that, and, and the Rapa Nui people started doing it out of ignorance, mostly. Yeah. So, well, now we are aware of the cumulative damage. We have lots of pictures. Our, uh, well, my grandmother appears like hugging statues in Ahuakivi. I have a beautiful picture. I can show it to you. Uh, one of the most beautiful women on the island, I can say. And um, I'm sure that your grandmother or your great grandparents have also pictures oh, yeah, like uh, with yeah. the statues hugging. Statues. Because there was no awareness that, that touching the statues, like, well, actually, if, if it's only you touching it, yeah, and it's that's not the so thing. bad. No, nothing happens. It's, right? That's the thing. Like the the amount of population back then was nothing compared to what it is today, and the amount of people that visited this place was nothing. Yeah, nothing, to, nothing. Nothing compared nothing. to what it is today. Yeah. It was like one ship that that came to the island, right? And that and that was it, right? Yeah, and and, and in that ship that, that came to the island once a year, it was just like fifteen tourists. Right, because all the rest of the people were naval personnel. And now we have 120,000 people coming to the island. So since the 1990s onwards, uh, we know really well, that, and, and there are pictures, it's just a matter of watching the pictures oh, yeah. of the statues in Vanu Raraku oh, between the... 1970s and the 2000s, when they first started to find out, okay, this is a trail, you can't get out of the trail at all. And we see the difference, we see that the statues are a lot more eroded, and it's not just because of the wind and not just because of the rain it's also because lots of people during those 20 30 years touched the statues and eroded them a lot i mean also like there has been some reenactment pictures from redone pictures from like this expedition uh, from uh, la vacherie yeah and uh redone like nowadays and you take a look at the both pictures trying to figure it out like they, these people were trying before to and out, after. Like, before and after, trying to yeah. figure out the same spot, and you can see an evident difference in both. Places. Yeah, yeah. Even though it's the same place, and 60 years apart. Yeah. Yeah. So a little bit is obviously the natural erosion. A little bit is, well, that uh, those crazy animals that are. Well, we don't have native fauna, but there's it's crazy. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. It, 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 there's people no... that were listening. The, the horses here on this island are free to roam everywhere, and they are causing I'm pretty... devastation. They are rampaging everything. I'm pretty con I'm pretty convinced that there are more four-legged animals than two-legged animals in this place. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, two two-legged mammals than like than, the, than primates. There are a lot of primates. Lot lot of a lot of. Uh, uh, we are hom primates. Hominids. Yeah. Ho hominids. hominids. Uh, but um, there are more ungulates. There are more, uh, yeah, horses and cattle and, and yeah, you're gonna see that a lot. And also other four-legged mammals like uh, dogs and cats. Well, but dogs and cats are not so bad because they have these um, smooth uh, uh, paws. Yeah, 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 the, the paws. paws. But 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 you also have like, okay, so for example, that animal is not gonna cause any any trouble with the archaeology, but also, but it's, it is gonna cause a change in the environment anyway, anyhow, right? Yeah, yeah. And and the birds, for example. Oh, the yeah. Bird oh. manure, the bird manure, the guano that's thrown on the over the statues also causes some damage. So. Well, with that said, well, all, all of that said, uh, as I see it, right, for, for conservation, right, basically, we know cumulative damage is an issue, that's why you're not allowed to touch the statues, that's why you're not allowed to get out of the trail, so... Because if you get out of the trail, yeah, maybe the statue is a little bit further away. But the fact that there's a trail is because uh, the park ranger can catch you before you get to the statue. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, well, we don't like it. As Rapa Nui, we don't like the trails. We don't like the signs. I don't like them. I hate them. Yeah, definitely. If it wasn't for me, there wouldn't be trails, there wouldn't be signs. There would be just education and responsibility. And people would not touch the statues because... 99 or 100 percent of the people would not touch the statues because they know it's bad to touch the statues but as we know it's quite the opposite it's like 99 percent of the people don't know that it's bad to touch the statue and they want to touch the statue and not only that but they just don't care it's not even that they don't know it's just that they just don't fucking yeah, care they're just coming once to the island yeah, yeah. why not right. if the statues go to hell we have to deal I with mean, them it's not them that have to deal I, with it they I, already took the selfie so so 
in a parenthesis, I think the worst thing I've ever seen here on this island, like I've seen a lot of crazy stuff going on, but when it comes to archaeological sites, is this foreign dude that took like nude pictures in Ahuna now, like in the 90s or 80s, and I saw this dude just sitting on a freaking platform naked, completely naked. Ah, you're kidding. No, I'm not no. kidding. I, I I have the footage somewhere. I'll have to figure it Dude, out. Dude, you have the footage. I have, like, the pictures. It was, like, Dude. the calendar pictures. It was hilarious and frightening at the same time. Do you have to send them to me so I can add them to the video for this yeah, podcast? Yeah, definitely. I'm, yeah, I'm going gonna, yeah. gonna to look for them. And if it's not <laughs> going to be in this podcast, it's probably going to be in the next ones. Right? Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if YouTube is going to allow nudes. And, and no, but I can blur the... Maybe. I can blur some of the... All right, yeah. yeah. Like, we can blur it, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Man, dude. Dude, well, I'm not joking. <laughs> like, it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, sounds like a joke, but lots of things sound like a joke on this island, and yeah. they're, they're actually true, unfortunately. Yeah. So, anyway, as Rapa Nui, we are more restricted. As Rapa Nui, we are more restricted. I mean, well, we all remember when we could go anywhere at uh, the quarry. At oh. Rano Raraku, we could go anywhere at Maunga Eo. Like, um, climb to the quarries, upper quarries, go all the way up. See the half-finished statues in, in, in different positions. See the giant statue, Teto Kanga, from the top. See all those things that you're not allowed to see anymore because there are trails. And the trails do not apply only to tourists. They apply to us, too. So, oh, man, I saw a lightning. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, we're podcasting here, but uh, there's a uh, thunderstorm that's moving past this island, like, like, like across, uh, by this island. These are only... It's, 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 these are all things you can only see in Pukurangi Uka Heights, yeah. man. Yeah, well, this is live live broadcasting, so we, we only upload one take, so we're, we're going to upload anyway. But trust me, there's lightning in the, the, the bunch of clouds that we can see to the south of the island. Huge, and the, the clouds look pink because it's sunset right now. It's beautiful, so, beautiful colors. Beautiful, beautiful uh, blue sky, pink clouds, and I just saw lightning striking down. It's, it's crazy. All right, we will keep, uh, <laughs> I mean... We'll, we'll keep it in, we'll keep it in. Yeah. But yeah. we're going with this whole thing. Okay, it was a, yeah, parenthesis. Anyway, so, um, basically, uh, for us, it's really bad that there are trails. For us, it's bad that we have trails, that we have signs, that we have all of these things, right? Um, now, well, we still do it, right? When there are no tourists... Or when, when uh, we, we talk to the park rangers, it's all okay. Park rangers are part of us. They are Rapa Nui like us, yeah. and, and we talk to them and we talk, tell them. That. I want to take pictures outside of the trail because it's my heritage. And I'm not going to damage anything. I'm not, I'm not going to take pictures sitting on a statue. I just want a different angle. I don't want to take the pictures from the same angles as everybody. Yeah. Right? And we do it. But anyway, we, we are still restri- restricted to do it. Right? We still have to talk to... We still have to discuss it, even and, though and, we shouldn't. And go in the off hours, and in, 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 in the hours when the park, national park is closed, and, and all of that. So, yeah, I hate that. We don't like it. So, what would be the solution? Well, as I see it, like this is very, this is utopia. Ah, oh utopia. Yeah. Right. Uh, the plane should have a, a movie, that, or not a movie, but but should have like the regulations in a video. Everybody should see it. Like when, when you board the plane through the screen in the seat. By the way, there's just one airline that comes here. Uh, they and their service is, is, has uh, fallen a lot. All right. right. Anyway, so um, they should have it on screen footage of uh, the island mm-hmm. with someone explaining the regulations. These are the regulations. This is it. If you uh, transgress, then you're going to pay for it dearly. Right? It's going to cost you a lot. Right? That's the first thing. That's the first, first part. Once you get here, there are 25 official visitation sites. The National Park Ticket gives you right to visit those 25 official visitation sites that have park rangers. That's it. No signs in the Ahu. Just one big, huge sign at the entrance. Right? And then that sign says again. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the R- National Park. 
don't climb on the Ahu, don't touch the statues, don't touch the foundations of boathouses, don't touch anything. Keep your distance, take pictures as much as you want. But if you touch anything, if you take any, if, if you walk over anything, you're gonna pay. It's gonna cost you a lot, and you're not gonna have fun during your stay on the island. Alright. And then, you have the park rangers obviously there, and uh, whatever happens, the park ranger can grab the ticket, confiscate the ticket, take it. That person's no longer gonna be allowed to visit any site again, right? And um, that would be great. So, outside of the 25 official visitation sites, it's completely forbidden, unless you go with a certified tour guide. So, that would solve lots of issues, right? If you want to go, if you want to go hiking, right? hiking from one site, from one point to another, you're going outside of one of the official visitation sites, but you're forced to go with a certified tour guide, right? Yeah, so, the certified tour guide is also a park ranger, I mean, Certified Tour Guide is not working as a park ranger, but we are taking care of our heritage, obviously. Yeah. And if they are certified and recognized by the Mao Henua indigenous community that's currently in charge of the national park, then uh, you will have the right also to confiscate the national park ticket if the uh, tourist misbehaves. And you can take a picture of the guy or the, or, or the gal, right? And then, uh, obviously, they will get the fine. So how do you see it? Well, I like your way to see it. I like the utopian view of, of okay, no science and everything. I hate science, you know. Like, I think they, they, they disturb a lot of what the, the, the ambiance of the place is whenever you go to any archaeological site whatsoever. I think, for the most part, yeah. For one thing is unifying this things, national park entity with tour guides. We have to we have to find a way to, to, to work together in a in a way that that's not counterproductive to each one of our jobs. Now having all these signs makes no sense at all. Contaminating the, the visual of the island with full of signs makes no sense at all. It destroy co- destroys context. Of course, of course, it distort it, it all, not only for pictures, but just for the sense of it, right? Now, on one thing, I believe that there's, uh, I believe that there's a lot of mishandling of the national park. I believe that there's a lot of things that we should be doing. Trails, hiking trails. I, I believe in hiking trails, man. I really do. I believe in uh, in in certified tour guides implementing all this more institutional stuff than anything, right? Just to make everything more official. I think institu- institutionalizing the national park with the park with the na- with the tour guides will be awesome, and that will fix probably ninety percent of all these problems. Just to be able to work together, coexist together, and. Uh, be able to point out people and not and as you said probably not let people out outside these 25 different spots which are plenty and no, the, probably they, the most with a tour guide they, they, it, it's, they, they would be allowed to go out of those 25 official visitation sites but with a tour, with guide. A tour guide yeah, yeah. Definitely. so uh, it would be better also for the experience of the people right? yeah no signs. They can take pictures with the original context, with the landscape. They can appreciate it. Let's forget about pictures, right? Um, it's the overall appreciation of the site. It's oh, yeah, not definitely. just about the pictures. And, and, but, but also in the same sense, I think it's a little, it's a little too much, um, too um, crazy to think that people are not going to do stuff if you don't have a sign in it. Especially with the amount of traffic that we have here on the island, 120,000 okay, people but, a year. But the official visitation sites have a park ranger. Oh yeah, definitely. Or, but still, or several park rangers. Yeah, but still, like you still have a lot of people working. You still have a lot of people going there. There are peak hours. But uh, as I said, it, at the entrance, there should be a huge sign saying, "Okay, 
You like, climb, climb the statues, you touch the statues, it's a huge fine. Take, right? take a look at what's... We will, we will make an example out of you if you do that. Right? Like, take a look at what's going on right now, for example, in, uh, in Machu Picchu. Where people are, well, where people are just uh, uh, taking lists hours, you know. Mm-hmm. You're freaking signing a list. So if you really want to come here, you really have to do paperwork and going through all this boring stuff, you know. Boring stuff. <laughs> have you seen Elon Musk's company? The, the, the boring, boring company. company yeah. <laughs> That's so fun, man. Yeah, it's yeah. so funny. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, yeah. So you really have to go through all this trouble in order to come here. Yeah. And then you might change the, dem- the demographics of people that come to the island. You know, one of the things that I really want to change here is the image of the island. This is not a place where you can just come here and, and you know, go to... This is not the Caribbean, man. This yeah. Is not, I'm, we're, we don't have all the stuff that the Caribbean has, right? If you want to have, like, a freaking... Resort. Am, resort experience, go to one of these fake beaches in the mid <laughs> You know, like in Miami or Florida, man. This is not it, man. This is an archaeological... This is, this is probably the, one of the most important archaeological sites in the world in the sense of how accessible it is to people. Yeah. So... And it's not dangerous. It's not. There's no violence. There's no wars going on around us. What do you think? Like, 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 going to the the core of, of this. Like, we've we've talked a little bit about preservation and how to to protect from from I from guests, from visitors. Right. Obvious, obviously, what would be the best way to protect from damage caused by visitors? That's not the only kind of damage that the archaeological sites get, I but think, but it's I one think, of the important ones. I think we should all move to change the image of the island. That's primarily the, the thing. Get rid of all all these um, you know nuances and nonsense that's going on right now. Yeah. Go to the beach, for example, and listen all to this loud music, having what wild hell, dogs, man. Man, dude. man, man that I, I, I really hate that. It's the beach is a sacred place to me. It's it's uh, it's the place where our it's, it's a the symbolic, king's landing. It's, it's, it's a, a it's a symbolic place to the island. It's, so it's, it's not a, like it's not like going to freaking. It has Moai. It has tombs. It has altars. It has statues. It has uh, man. It has it. It's it's really a solemn place. You yeah. know, when I went to, for example, there's this city in Germany called Dresden, and there's this area near the Frauenkirche. That's the the main church. The main uh, Protestant church of Dresden, one of the oldest churches and probably the biggest church from that era, well, from when it was built. Yeah. So it was destroyed in the bombings in World War II and later reconstructed, re- rebuilt Re- with some of the original features of it. Yeah. Rock, uh, oh, some right. of the original um, uh, parts, right? Yeah. What was left, like they used the original ones and they used some new ones because it was completely destroyed by the bombings, right? So when the people from Dresden walk, or, or are near that church, there's this silence, man. There, 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 there's silence. You know, or very low voice. When people speak nearby, and you see the church dominating the landscape, it's something really amazing. The church dominates the landscape. And man, I am... I, I'm, I don't have to either. I'm an atheist. I, I don't believe in any of those things. But I felt like this reverence towards the church. It was really amazing. And I was part of it too. Even though I, I'm not Catholic, I'm not, I'm not Christian, I'm not, you were I'm not there religious. Politically there. But I was there, and I shared that feeling. I shared it. It was, it was amazing, man. That's what I'm saying, man. So, Anakena, it's not like that. And even though Anakena has nothing to envy from the Frauenkirche, it's uh, older, it has uh, monuments that are older than Frau, Frauenkirche. There was a terrific restoration done by Sergio Rapo between 1978 and 1980. Yeah. And, uh, and the, the site is not respected. And you have the loud music, and you have the people that's, having. That's it's the okay. Thing. I mean, it's even okay if people want to go and swim there. It's okay if people want to go and and have a barbecue there, but with due respect. With Definitely, due respect. and and that's what I'm saying. Like, I think rather than just doing all this crap, we should just, you know, like change the image of the island for once and for all. Just change it for 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 good. And say, hey, we're not gonna allow this. If you want to do this kind of shit, go to some, go somewhere else. Don't come yeah. here. Yeah. Like, definitely, like. But then again, but that happens mostly with with the residents. Well, yeah, well, well, with, the, with the, 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 well, that's the thing. Like, resident population, not with tourists. 
Well, th that's the thing. You, you will once you change the image of the island, everything is gonna change. Residents are gonna change. Yeah. People are gonna move. People are gonna. If if you don't adapt, you move out. And people like you know. I still have that faith in humanity where people like, I guess, mob thinking. If somebody starts something and he sees that everybody is doing that, then yeah. he's gonna, you know, even even though he doesn't understand what's going on, he's still gonna just that do person it. Is just yeah. do it, you know. So I think we should change that for the good, for the good of the place, for the good of archaeology. Not only archaeology, not only as a Rapa Nui, but probably as a human heritage place, you know, like as a human being, dude. This is a feat in in one. This is one island among thousands. Yeah, yeah. This is one place among thousands. It's the last frontier. It's so, the last, last place so in the world. The way I see it is that, dude, we shouldn't, we shouldn't educate people. Educated people should come here. Ah, oh, all right. You all see, right. You see what all I'm right. saying? Like, yeah. we shouldn't. Ed I'm not going to waste my time educating some nut job that doesn't care about the island. Sure. Sure. Dude, do you want to go to the beach? I cool with. I'm cool with that. Dude, go to Brazil. Dude, go but, to. I'm, I'm go with to, you in in that. But how do you filter? That that's the thing. Well, you more you make more strict stuff, man. And that's it. You make a deal. You make a, a list of people that can come here. You but, make. But how can how can you do that? You, you well, do them you, a test, a quiz, a no, quiz you, well, before they come here. Well, first of all, first of first of all, you have to unify all one institution that will take care of it. Well, Mauhenua takes care of the national park. Well, yeah, but, you know, like, at the moment. Not for 50 years. At least at least for 50 years. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Well, we, they should be taking care of that then. You know, okay, we have a... a you know, we've been, we, they should waste their money in doing testing. Okay, we should allow this waste. amount. Of, no, not they spend, should, they waste. They, they shouldn't <laughs> waste their money. Sorry, sorry. They shouldn't waste their money in crap. They should... <laughs> spend the money they should invest the money and say hey you know what this is the ideal amount of people that we should have at any given point during the year here at the island at the same time okay what well, that that's the amount but but what about i mean if you anybody if you, can come i mean no if, yeah if, but if you, if you really want to come and you have a reduced amount of uh uh like uh takes you can come here okay I want to come to Easter Island. What should I do? Oh, fill this paperwork. Do you want, dude? Do you want to come in 2019? You know when I do went it to in the, 2018. If if you're thinking now, you dear listener, if you're thinking now that that's discrimination, when I went to the United States in 2012. Oh come on, man! We, uh, they made me fill a huge. Um, um, Quiz or or five? No, it was not a quiz, but it was like a, um, it was a huge document that they had to fill, fill in with with information. With, with there were some funny questions like, "Are you a terrorist that's gonna uh, bring bombs and 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 kill people on oh, our country?" Straightforward, <laughs> like, straightforward, like, like, forward straightforward forward questions. Straightforward. Right? Forward. I wonder if anybody answered yes. I, yeah, yeah. I am yeah. right, but but it and was regretted really funny. it afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously no, but some questions were really funny, and that was for the visa that, that they had to yeah. to, to get, apply for. Right? Yeah. Now there's no visa between Chile and the United States. There's a reciprocation, so uh, United States people that come to Chile, yeah. uh, they'll need a visa, and Chile is going to the United States, well, they'll need a visa. We, right? we, we should use, use that to here, okay? Do so there is a visa. The government, the government. Yeah, okay, so the government, for example, okay, we as the U.S. government. Yeah, we want yeah. to allow U.S. citizens to go to to Israel and freely. Okay, yeah. so it's it's a sort of discrimination, but yeah. you know, discrimination obviously has this negative connotation right now, oh, especially yeah, in no. Chile and so on. But it's a sort oh, of yeah. discrimination. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna say straight out, um, discrimination is not always bad. Boom, dude! Discrimination dude. is basic, man. Filtering people, filtering things. You discriminate all the time. PC bullshit. Go off the drain, man. Dude! <laughs> Go off the freaking drain. When, when are you that? running for, for mayor on this island? Man? Oh, no. You should. No, Definitely no, should. Dude, no. But, yeah. Let's... All the PC shit aside, man. We should we should definitely change the image of the island. And for good. You know, like, I'm, I know I'm saying all this stuff and I'm sounding really like... 
uh, oh, this dude wants okay, to... Okay, but this, 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 is, this would be the typical uh, Chilean complaint, right? This is Chile. Man, uh, we bring the money to your island, right? Who are you to discriminate because we are bringing the money to the island, right? Dude, I mean, what the fuck are you talking about? What money? Okay, <laughs> what money, man? <laughs> Show me the money, man. I have no pennies from you, man. Show me the evidence. Show me the evidence. So, yeah. Like, okay, you can say a lot of stuff, you know? Like, I don't care about it. Like, the thing is, we should change the island's image in the sense... This say is the, prof the, the, the profiling the profile. of people, right? Okay, do you want okay, to... Do you want to go to the Vatican? But, do you, but, but, you don't think they didn't do any profiling but, there? But, but how do you do that, man? How do you do that? The people can lie in the quizzes, people can uh, whatever, right? Yeah, it's well, you make everything more strict. You make em everything a little bit more difficult to come. Not difficult, but a little bit more paperwork. Uh, well, uh, don't, you know what? Don't ask me how to do it now, because if I had the idea, I would have told somebody that had the power to implement it to do it already. I don't know how to do it. Maybe we should think about it. Right? Uh, I don't think, I don't know. It's a little bit of a crazy idea. Uh, but do you think well, so? Yeah. yeah. I mean, in a yeah, maybe long term. Yeah, it, long term, it, definitely. It, it would this work, is... long term. But um, no, man. I, I don't know. Well, I, you, should... You've seen the trend. The, the trend is that we are getting, for example, more and more Chinese people coming to the island. Well, change. Well, for one thing, and, change and, the and, face of the tourism and, agencies. And and well, this is like record this. I'm not saying screenshot this, but uh, yeah. the in five years from now, not even five, in three years from now, mm -hmm. the second uh, country that sends more visitors to this island is going to be China. Second, oh, yeah, after Chile. Why not? Why not? After Chile. Dude. Um, and we know. I mean, this is not well pointing fingers at anyone. But Chinese tourists in general, they are they do not respect anything, man. They do not respect yeah. anything. Right? The great great majority of them, they, they don't respect the signs, they don't respect the trails, they just go everywhere, anywhere, like wherever they want. They think because they are paying for it, they sh they are well, they are allowed the to is, go anywhere think, they want. I think we covered this a little bit on the last podcast, but probably if the tourism agencies as a whole we stop there's no integrity integrity if we if we stop getting a little bit of integrity into them maybe we could change the, this a lot faster than we think we could all right so well uh, about uh, going into so that's about tourists damaging the archaeological heritage well, but but what about animals dude yeah, what, what about that, right? And because we have animals and weather Dude, and, and weather, and, that, and we should and so we on. should we should totally get the national park entity to control the people that have animals, man. What's Dude. what's the what's the, the point Dude. in having three hundred like what's three thousand horses on this? There, what's no the point? point? There's no point. Dude, like, they like, don't like, do anything. They're, I mean, some of the people that listen to this will come to this island. Some people that will come to this island will search for Easter Island on YouTube. Rapanui on YouTube and they'll, they will find this this episode. Yeah. All right. Don't ask about the horses. Horses are useless. We don't like them. Most of the Rapanui don't. It's like 10 or 12 people that own horses on the island and they like them. And it's because they think it's some sort of a lifestyle thing to own like scores of horses and have them just free all over the place. They don't care about them. No, they no, don't no. Uh, neuter them. They don't... Uh, uh, take them to the veterinarian they let the horses die from diseases from sicknesses from anything they the accidents die yeah. all over the place and uh, well horses are everywhere and owners don't give a damn about them so yeah I my take on that on animals is that the National Park entity should definitely prohibit animals if I see your animal if in my national an park, I will tax I will you. destroy you. I, I will, will tax you, dude. I, I, I will, will destroy you, man. I will destroy you. I'll, I'll I'll send all the every single ounce of weight of the law of punishment that I can I send to you. I'll send it. Right? Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. So that's the thing. Animals, get rid of them. 
we should totally get rid of the amount of cattle. We the don't need horses. the horses. I mean, if you have this, we don't need them. Horses are just all over the place. We don't need them. Uh, there are a few people that ride them, but those yeah. horses. I mean, if you ride the horse, it's okay. You, you can have your horse if you ride it. If you take care of it, it's okay, right? But just having horses, it's just like like you branded it and you let it loose. And now we have 3,000 horses all over the island, roaming over the island, climbing over the Ahu, scratching their backs against the statues. And you feel so cool about having scores of horses. What what the hell? No, dude, that's bad. That's really bad. Now, with the animals, now we're going from external problems to, I guess, internal problems with the island. Like, how do we manage things here? Like, for example, people, residents. How do we manage the Rapanui people that allow, you know, like uh, other people. They take them to cool places because, oh, this is cool and nobody knows about this place. And they damage some stuff on the way. Yeah. That's, because that happens a lot. Yeah, yeah. That happens a lot. Um, let me let me show you this really cool place that nobody knows about, but everybody really knows about. And, yeah. you know, I'm just bullshitting you. And... And that's it. Dude, stop that. Education. Education. National Park education. National Park. But you Not just said that, that you didn't care about education. Of, 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 uh, we were, we were talking about tourists. Visitors. All right. Not educating. I don't care about giving a lecture of archaeological preservation worldwide to a tourist. If it's going to be a local person that's going to be taking care of the National Park, yes, definitely. All right. We should we should take the education inwards, not outwards. Um, well, we but but let's say, man, you're a tour guide. You educate people anyway. Yeah, but that's the thing. That and 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 I got educated by people. Okay. So so that's the thing. I know how to control things because I got educated myself. And I and as a tour guide, I took I went through different processes, different things. I have experience on the field. So. All of these things are going to be taken care of on the way, but mainly education, man. To me, it helped me out a lot as a tour guide, and that's the main thing. And if you're going to, and I guess for local people, it's it's really useful. For for foreigners, it makes no sense. I'm not, I don't, the fact that I, I try to contain people rather than, rather than teach them, because like, there's no point in teaching a, a, a 40 year old dude that I just met, um, you know. About, dude, dude, I have no dude. Just don't do it. I tell them, don't do it. If you do it, you're going out. That's it. You yeah, know? that's it. And you know the rules are simple. There's no question about it. But still, you get all a lot of bullshit. But again, local people, we should get educated ourselves in school as a community, the municipality. But the you, you, you think that's not? I mean, when I see around, uh, obviously. Uh, the idiots that are remarking the petroglyphs and, and Again, stuff like, like that. Ob- obviously, that, 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 will be, that, that will be gone with education. But that's man. ignorance. Yeah, that, that's solved that's, by education. But yeah. uh, I see that most of the, the, the people that from our generation and, and, and down, like, yeah. even even teenagers, they, they know about it. They, they don't need to be educated anymore. They know the, how much, how valuable things well, are. Do, like, do you, not to quote, but you're assuming they know. No, I know them. I've talked to them. I don't. I'm not assuming anything. Uh, I know them. I've, I've taught them. I've been in in, in the aldea. I've, I've been giving them lessons about. Them. Uh, oh, dude, I'm seeing Venus from here. The planet. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Oh uh, yeah, it's it's so cool to. We're start starting to see the stars. The sun is setting, and and we're starting to see the stars. And Venus is looking great from here. Yeah. But anyway, so. Yeah, I'm not assuming anything. I see that that the um, teenagers, the, the the children in high school. To me, they are children still, like oh, yeah, teenagers. Yeah. But anyway, from 14 to 18, they, they know their stuff. They they know how they well, know more than el- they, they know more than people are in their 50s. But if, they know but, more than people in their oh, 60s. Yeah, definitely. But if you take a look at these people. What happened to them? What what? So you have now, for example, Tao, Terevac Archaeological Outreach, yeah. Manu Piri. Yeah. Shout out to Brett Shepherdson, right? Who is who's doing the Tao program? Brett Shepherdson, Britain Shepherdson, 
uh, that's coming from the United States once a year to do the Tao and helping uh, to to and, make and those, it, those people understand those those, ch those children understand everything about the island. That's pretty nice. It, we need more stuff like that. People yeah. like him are good people. People like him, things or insti or ideas like that is of what we need for kids. You know, I understand what you're saying, and Man, I but, think but that, that's why I do it too. That's why yeah. I go to, to school. That's why I go to high school. That's why I give them um, like lectures, classes, classes, lectures, yeah. and, and presentations, and, and it, 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 I do it, and I'm happy to do it. And, and anytime, if you're listening to this and, and you're on the island, I'm, I'm always happy to do it because. And sometimes Rapa Nui people tell me, how much do you charge to teach me about this? And I don't charge you anything. You're Rapa Nui, you're entitled. This, this knowledge is not my knowledge. Yeah. This this belongs to all of us. It, we are Rapa Nui. We, Absolutely. Yeah. And we should keep it that way. So I guess, again, like going back to internal problems of how we manage archaeology, I think uh, education is mainly, or is the main is the main source and the main course of action we should take. So if, if when we go towards the like, how do we protect the statues from things that are not like ed, um, you cannot educate these things. Rain, wind, these things damage the archaeological heritage more than tourists in some cases. Maybe not more than horses. Maybe not more than sheep did for near 100 years between the 1860s and the 1960s, yeah. right? Um, but these things are, um, man, weathering out the features of the statues. Yeah. Yeah. They are deteriorating everything, right? How do you protect these things? So then you reach the paradox, right? Should Have we... you heard these crazy things? Like sometimes we get visitors that uh, say very crazy stuff. Like you go to Papa Vaca. Papa Vaca is a site in the north coast that has lots of petroglyphs. Yeah. Uh, all related to the sea with fish and, and sharks and, and canoes and, and fish canoes hooks and, and fish hooks and octopus and, and things like that. Okay. So you go there and there are always these uh, I mean should I should I just say the word right? Yeah. Smart asses. The oh, smart yeah. ass. The you know the, the smart smart ass kind of tourist. Yeah. Right? That comes to the island and in like 10 minutes he figures it all out and he's like why don't you do this why don't you do that it would be so easy to solve all the problems of the oh, island yeah, I've been here for 10 it. minutes yeah. and, and, and in 10 minutes I've solved everything right uh, oh, most of the people okay. that think they solve things they probably make things more complicated than they do I mean I can tell them 10 times the amount of problems we have on this island 10 times the amount of problems and I can solve the problems they have in their country in their city in their county like like really in 10 minutes too right yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all about the, the way to do it the logistics the political power yeah. if you have power to do things or not and, and well corruption all that that affects us also too right yeah, yeah. And, and I will say it in this podcast and everywhere we have a mayor that's a corrupt that is a crooked guy oh completely dude, crooked you, you gotta be re should I say the word? If, if, if I, I if, say if, the word? if I pass away in the next week, right? This guy just hired a. a this um, guy just. We have a blackout on this island, man. Dude, dude, dude you just right. you yeah. just talk about him. He already blacked out your house, man. What the fuck? Fortunately, this uh, we are recording. We don't need energy for this. Anyway. Well. So. Yeah, well, so so what, what I say, right? It, it's easy from, from the outside to, to say, oh yeah. oh, yeah, have this figured out, this, this is the way to solve it or whatever. So when it comes to Papa Vaca on the petroglyph side, when they come and say, oh, well, why don't you just put some glass cover over these petroglyphs? Dude, what do you think about that? Dude, it's the <laughs> same when I go to the quarry, I get that question all around, like, we should put like some plastic wrap around them and keep them, you know, like this is not my grandma's house, man, where we keep like yeah. things with sofas with plastic wraps and bubble wraps everywhere, man. Bubble wrap and some, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we should you know, just like stick everything with bubble wrap and, you know, that, that, that will fix everything, man. Yeah. I think it's a uh, natural things are inevitable. 
that's the true but but difference between something but, being tragic and something being evil. But well, intent. beyond beyond that, beyond that, what, what's the point in having a statue with fucking bubble wrap around? <laughs> that's no, it makes no fucking sense. That's the thing. I believe natural phenomena we should study before we do things. Like for example, the 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 the, the conservation processes for different types of rock. What can we do in order to avoid unnecessary uh, behaviors? But when it comes to natural phenomena, dude, we're pretty much done. Like, but man, be- bubble wrap. Uh, <laughs> or, yeah, yeah. Well, in, well, in, bubble wrap. It's a little far off, you know. Like yeah, but in this, fetch, but, but yeah. in this case, uh, glass cover over the petroglyphs of Papa Vaca. Oh yeah, they will look very cool with some glass on top, right? My man, t- man, what, what, what? My take if, on- if you destroy the the landscape, if you destroy with, with artificial stuff how things looked like, what's the point? What's the point? Right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we should take care of things up to a point. Again, my take on it, and I'm very clear on this, natural phenomena, there's nothing we can change about. There's nothing we should... Sure. Nothing we can do about, and it's going to happen, and I think it's... Fairly beautiful and very poetic in a way. You know the fact that things don't linger so long, and you know that we should appreciate things as we are, as we have them today. So that brings me to the to the following point. You know, I was reading an article in a, an online website called Eon, yeah, and they were talking about replicas. You know, in 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 um, in Japan, in China. Generally, in the Far East, right? I'm, I'm using a Western term. I was educated in, in the West. I was educated in Chile. So I'll use uh, Far East. Right? In this sense, China, Japan, Korea, and so on. Yeah. So, not North Korea. No, nor- uh, I know North yeah, Korea yeah, is very yeah, popular so. nowadays, but uh, uh, maybe North Korea too. Like Kim Jong-un, if you're listening to this. And maybe Dude, I'm, if you're I'm, I'm listening to this, please don't nuke us, man. Don't, don't nuke, nuke us. Don't nuke Easter Island, please. Dude, I mean, we've not, we've done nothing to you. I, right? I've, I have enough with the horses, man. I don't need a nuke here, man. All right, that guy looks so much like Majin Buu from from Dragon Ball. <laughs> anyway, Dude. yeah. Well, whatever. So the thing is, in 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 the Far East, do you know what? The most popular sort of uh, archaeological site? Which one? Uh, Modern replicas of archaeological sites. Like scale replicas? Or real modern, life? modern? Like, yeah. like done in the last 20, 30 years? Yeah. Of archaeological sites that are uh, 500 years old. Mm-hmm. Or, or 800 years old. Or sometimes 1,000 years old. Yeah. And the original is still there in some cases. But the Japanese or the Chinese don't care about going... Like most, like some do, but most don't care about going to visit the original. They prefer much more to visit the replica. Yeah. So, in China, there are these artists that are making... They are devoted to make replicas of, for example, the terracotta soldiers. Yeah. So they go and make perfect, exact, pristine fantastic replicas of the terracotta soldiers and then there's a museum in Europe that wants to showcase a terracotta soldier and so they request a terracotta soldier to China and China sends a terracotta soldier it's not just it's it's just not an original terracotta soldier it's not the the 2000 year old or I I don't know sorry I'm an ignorant when it comes to Asia I don't know how old the original terracotta soldiers are but it's not the 2,000 or 3,000 or 4,000 year old terracotta soldier. They send a replica that was just done 10 years ago or five years or maybe the same year. The and they, is- they send it to Europe. And in Europe, they showcase the, the terracotta soldier. And um, when they find out that it's not an original terracotta soldier, uh, a European museum is like, oh, what, what, they, they are, what, what's this, right? This is a con. They they have they are they are lying to us. They, yeah. they sent us a, a, a damn replica. What does this mean, right? And then they send it back to China, and in China they don't understand this. They it's like they, they are like, why are they sending us this? Why are they offended, right? 
But I know why in the West you... people are offended very easily nowadays, right? Why are it's all, you triggered? It's, it's like why the, are you the, triggered? The, 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 there's this uh, victim uh, Olympic Games of the victimization. But that's a different issue. We will talk about postmodernism in some other podcast. But anyway, so that's the big difference in, in, in the view. So my point is, in the West, it's all about the original thing. In the East, it's the original the is not necessarily better than, than, than the replica. And, yeah. and for them, sometimes the replica is even better than the original because the replica can be much closer to the original than the original. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because the, the original, the original, original, gets, state to the the original gets, state. Get, yeah. gets weathered yeah, and yeah. it erodes and it disappears. It's, and over time, and it's, it's, a, it's, it's old. Oh, you old. It's the old. Right? Hashtag eight hey, Skrillex. Eight <laughs> Skrillex. So anyway, so it's old, right? So the replica brings it back to life. Yeah. <laughs> then the replica shows how it uh, how it originally looked like. So uh, yeah, but, but the police don't don't ask me. But the the, the article is in Eon. Eon is a very great magazine. Uh, they are not sponsoring us or anything, but I. Recommend it a lot. Eon, A E O N, right? And uh, in, in the magazine, there's a temple in Japan that's like the original is like 600 years old or something, and everybody goes to the like 10 year old temple because that one looks like the original should look like, like like when the original was new, and people go to visit that one and they get the feeling on how it looked like in ancient times. So well, also you got all these temples that are. For example, in Japan, that they were reconstructed using nowadays materials, but using ancient techniques. So you still see the same sort of architecture in the construction, just with modern materials. You know that's how they usually do it. But the, the thing, thing is, here is like, dude, you got a you you got a volcanic tough man. How are you gonna make a volcanic tough replica out of like that looks that looks more original than the original? You can perfectly do it, man. Do, do you think it's there, not going to change the let, environment? Let, let's say the statue... Like you see a fake statue like in the middle of... But what, I mean, it's it's fake, but it's much closer. It's not fake. It was made by our, a local artist. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah it was made by a local artist. It's not fake. And it looks... For example, the, the statue well, in Ahutahai. Ahutahai in, on the west coast. The central statue of the Tahai Archaeological Complex. That statue is completely weathered. That statue has almost zero features that make it res- resemble the, the original statue that the ancient Rapa Nui people raised over that Ahu. Ancient Rapa Nui people raised a statue that had details. A statue that looked like the Ahu Nau Nau statues from Anakena. Yeah. A statue that was pristine, perfect, well polished, with perfect proportions and everything. Right, the statue that's in Ahuta High right now has no perfect proportions. The statue that's in Ahuta High right now is badly eroded. Most of the features are washed away by the sea, by the salt spray, by the water, by the rain, by everything. Right? It doesn't look anywhere close to the original one. So, if we can use scientific method to determine how that statue looked like uh, 450 years ago. And if it's possible to print, or to cast, or to carve a perfect replica of how the Ahutahai statue looked like 450 years ago, wouldn't you consider that statue closer to the original than the current one, than, than the original? The, the, well, the new one would yeah. be closer to the original yeah, than the original definitely. one. But that doesn't solve the problem of what should we do with the original. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just throwing this. I'm, I'm just right, saying yeah. it, it's a very provocative yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, it, I, it provoked me. I it, like it. it. I, I it, like it, it because it's, 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 it makes sense, man. It makes sense the fact that, okay, we should see this in, the, in its prime time. Mm-hmm. Dude, why don't we just do it? And that's why I liked the, what they are doing in Baihu now. Mauhenua Kudos, where your, your fake village that triggered so many Rapa Nui that's in Baihu right right now. There's a fake village there that has some replicas of boathouses, yeah. of, of Hare Painga, 
replicas of some chicken coops, replicas of some uh, hare, hare moa, mm -hmm. uh, right? Replicas of some uh, cooking structures. Man, it triggered so many people on the island, but that's fine because it's, it shows how the originals look like. Uh, we can go to see the foundations of those boathouses elsewhere. Yeah. But they do not even look close to the original ones. And these look close to the original ones. So uh, kudos in that sense to me, right? Now, I'm, st I'm still not completely convinced by the way of thinking of the Easterners, e Eastern nations, like, like Far East people. Yeah. But it's really something that we have to give a few spins in. in oh yeah, our, definitely. Because, we should totally because it, think about it. It's really interesting. I mean, what do you do? You think it's interesting, or you, I you, think you, would you completely just reject that idea? Oh no, I think the replicas might be a good idea, especially if you want to, if you want to see how it's supposed to look like in its prime time, so to speak, right? Yeah. But I still have some sort of uh, thing that there's so much archaeology yeah so much stuff going on on the island sure there are so many original stuff that are still laying out there you know weather weathering animal breeding you know like a lot of stuff but should we really okay so yeah at some point we should do something like that we should try replicas we should try different things but again like that just doesn't solve the original problem, which is what should we do with the weathering of the statues, man? Like what? Like the original statues? Should we just let them go? Okay, if we make replicas, should, should we just let them be? So, so I, I return the question to you: What should we do with it? I should we just let them go? Because in in the end, not making a replica and just letting them there, we are still letting them. Oh go. yeah, no, yeah, definitely. But should we? That's an interesting question. Well, um, yeah, no, I'm not against the replicas, man. I like, I like the idea of the replicas. Should replica. we put a giant glass thing over the 15 no. statues in Ahutongariki? But I think it's just, <laughs> on my perspective, I think it's more poetic just to think. I, I'm more of a, I guess, a, a, I, I'm more of a literary kind of dude. So, uh, so basically, so, my idea is that, dude, this is not going to last forever. All of these things are gonna are are not gonna last forever. We should, you know, we should respect them. We should avoid as much as possible as we can. But, but uh, there's no way you can stop the natural de deterioration of things. But uh, you can still appreciate them. You can still have the appreciation. And you can still stop unnecessary uh, erosion on them. So, yeah, no, to totally right. Uh, and we can, we should not. And I mean, there's this paradox, right? For yeah, example, that's it. What, what, what that's do they do? What, what have they done in Europe, in, in Altamira and in the Lascaux caves? In Lascaux in France, yeah. Altamira in Spain. And, uh, well, not Spain, maybe Basque. Basque country. Yeah. Country and, and, and or, or Cantabria, right, in, in the north of Spain. Um, they have done these replica caves. So no one's allowed to go to the original one. So everybody goes to the uh, uh, fake cave. Should, should, should we make a fake island next to, to us to, so to visit? We, everybody goes there and we stay here and we enjoy our national park by ourselves. So so that well, would be fucking great. May, maybe we would move to the fake island because the fake island is much closer to the original island than than this island is, right? The original yeah, island would be just the derelict place that's, an that's forgotten and it's it's like oh that's where everything is rotting away whereas on the fake island everything is much closer to how it was in, in i don't know 500 years ago but right? the thing is and this is my question do we want how long do we want to preserve this forever if we make replicas we can preserve forever but and that, do we that, really want that's, that that's the point of the chinese and the japanese people like uh, it doesn't matter if the replica Get, it gets well I mean starts to get eroded and starts to disappear over time they can make just another replica but so that's how things last forever but through should, replicas and replicas and replicas should, and replicas should, should, should so take let, let's take this deep even even deeper man right? All right, all right, all right so let's imagine that people can resurrect 
Not your body, because your body will run away. You're, oh, you're, you're, you're just on. a weakling, bio biological creature, All right. right? Let's imagine that they can resurrect your consciousness uh, in a machine. And a, it's a self-replicating machine. So we get rid of our weak biology. Uh, our biological part will disappear over time and we will become some sort of software or consciousness, right, over time. Yeah. But that, that's, that's the only way for immortality. It's not... But the thing is, like... Religion. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's the only way... That's, no, that's, that's, my, that's what I'm trying to say here. It's like, on my behalf, I'm not... If we're going to start doing replicas and doing the, redoing the island over and over again and over well, and over so again and over question. and over again, that's, to me, it just, under my perspective, that I won't, I'm not up for it. I, Why I'm, not? Because that's the I think somewhat that's the beauty of things, you know. The, to to that appreciate things are not not forever. Forever that things yeah. are just um, they, they have their time. Frame. They have their time frame, man. Sure. I, no. And and I, I and, and, and that's I, precisely. I truly, I truly believe that that's the main symbolism behind this whole thing, and that's the main reason why I respect these places more than anything, is because I don't want to be part of what's killing them. Yeah. Even yeah. though I see them die, I don't want to be part of what's killing them. So, you know, what do you want to... What do, I see it this way. What do we want to do? Do we want to keep them forever and just, uh, uh, you know, like, reenact them over and over again? Like a, like, a, like, a, like a broken record? Or do we really want to keep it like, okay, let's just let them go gracefully? Yeah. In a hundred years? In three hundred no, years? No, nothing goes, goes out gracefully well things just die yeah. out and well, yeah and, and well, through okay. ag it's an okay, agonizing let, period and okay like that okay so should we just let it go that's my I leave the open question I think you know I'm more open to the fact that okay we should make replicas we should try to preserve as much knowledge as possible so, so the thing but the, the thing itself the physical vessel itself it's gonna go away anyway yeah no, but but but, anyway. but to me there are no obvious answers. So, so oh, no, after no after you answers, listen, no. you you made very good point there, right? There's a history to the to those original things we see on Rapa Nui today, right? The statues and the ahu we see today were made by people living under certain Condition. context, yeah. certain circumstances they had to go through. They had to fight against some things. They had to struggle against some things. They had to work in, a, in certain ways. They did not have all the free time we have nowadays, right? And, and so on. And they did it. And, and that's part of what makes valuable the archaeological sites we have today. Yeah. The history of the site. How it was made, right? Yeah. So, that obviously it's... It, there's no replica that can that can claim something like that. And, and There's no replica no, that can no, claim no, something no. like that. And, so, and, and the thing so is, there are two things. It's the outside appreciation, right? So obviously the replica would be, could be more valuable than the original from the outside perspective. But the essence of the side, and I am a, I, and I, I, I can say it without shame, I am an, an essentialist kind of person. To me, the essence of those sites, it's the history of those sites. I am a historian, I'm, I cannot help it, right? Yeah. Definitely. So, yeah, that's the, definitely you make very good points. So, w what I say is that there are no obvious answers, right? And there are people that can really have good points when it comes to that, right? Yeah. And, and in the East versus West way of thinking, I'm not saying that I favor East versus West. Oh, no. It's a provocative I, way, I, I, it's really provocative and it makes you think. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I mean, should we have some replicas? Should we have only originals? Or what should we do? Right? There's no obvious. Answers. Yeah, like, like, should, like, cause I'm, I'm, a, I'm at odds here, cause at, at some point, oh, dude, that was a lightning, dude. Did yeah. you see that? Oh, that was freaking cool. Man, it's it's like a the tenth lightning, but dude, you're, that's you're, I'm cool. facing the lightning yeah, in part, and you're I'm facing backwards. backwards and so, yeah, yeah, I'm not really seeing them, but I just saw the the light stroke. But anyway, like, yeah, I get it. We should do replicas but not so many that the essence of the thing loose just goes to waste like we can make a replica a hundred years from now but um 
But uh, but is it gonna have the same meaning as you originally intended to? Yeah, yeah. No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. So no, but the but the current ah and the current statues obviously have no. They are not fulfilling the meaning for which they were made originally. No, but, not at all. But, but today, not at all, think, man. No, not at all. But well, 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 the, today we have the appreciation that we have we, for we, them. Today, from, from from what we and maybe in a hundred years, and maybe in a hundred years, oh, the yeah. statues of Ahua Kivi will be the seven explorers of of some legend. Yeah, definitely. Or maybe, or maybe this whole thing is gonna disappear. Who knows? But the thing yeah. is, yeah, shouldn't we? Shouldn't we? Shouldn't we just? Uh, so well, basically, the, we're we're like uh, we we're. It, it, this has been really fun, right? Yeah. And I love talking about this, and we will continue to cover this kind of stuff in the podcast. But just to to finish things off and and, and to kind of summarize this, what do you think about restoring, restoration? Restoration, I think it's a good thing as long as we can. Restoration, we can. As, we as we definitely as we, can. As long as we can, I'm up for it, man. I'm up for it. I'm up for restorations. We should. We should do a little more. Or, or, we should find a balance between respecting places and doing archaeological side and, do, and doing archaeological research as much as we can. We should find a balance between both of that. But uh, and restoration falls into the uh, falls into the frame of that. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Restoration totally falls into the frame of that. Yeah. If I can see, if I can grab the original original and make it look what it's supposed to look like on the way that it is now. Then I will. I will. If a part of my house falls in today, I'm gonna restore it, man. I'm not just gonna leave it there because it's historical. And what if you can make a better house instead of just restoring your old house? Well, that's what let's, let's our imagine life culture is. is. That's yeah. what a life culture is. Yeah. If we, we well, we, why don't we start building a house for burying all our our dear? Uh, I'd love to be buried in an ahu. I'm, I don't ahu, think man. that's gonna happen, right? But. I would love to be buried in Dude, Nahu, <laughs> man. If, if if I if I, I will raise my when, children when, to brainwash them to when, bury me in a Nahu. Man. When I when I pass away, please take my bones and, or my ashes, whatever whatever's left, right? Uh, and I've told my wife the same thing. Take my take my bones and my ashes or whatever, right? To Ahu Mahatua, where, where that's where the Pakarati family comes from, right? And bury me there. Right. Not me. Bury my remains. Whatever. Whatever's left. Yeah. All right. It's been great. It's been a great pleasure. We've had um, this podcast with the sunset from Pukurangiuka and um, with some uh, thunderstorm. You haven't heard the thunder because it's a distant thunderstorm that's passing by the island, but we, we're seeing the lightning all the, all the time from here. Yeah. It's already dark. We saw Venus uh, sinking in the ocean towards the west. Right, so it's it's been great. Uh, and well, stay tuned. Aku Aku Transmissions. I'm Cristian Moreno Pacarati saying uh, goodbye. Goodbye.